Hello world, today in hacking news, Snake. It's one of the most mysterious pieces of malware ever seen. Buried deep in its code are strange Illuminati looking symbols. And up until recently, if you tried to Google it, you'd find only a small handful of instances where it's shown its face. But Snake isn't just malware, it's a network. Developed all the way back in 2003 by the elite Russian state hacking group Turla, it's played a pivotal role in Russian cyber espionage for the past 20 years. Turla is a group known by many names, Waterbug, Venomous Bear, Iron Hunter, and countless others. They spawned in 1996, launching their debut campaign, Moonlight Maze, which saw them stealing secret documents from NASA, the Pentagon, and numerous other US government agencies. After that hack, which quite literally puts the very concept of cyber espionage on the map, Turla hackers began developing Snake, though at first it was called Ouroboros, named after the ancient symbol of a serpent eating its own tail, which represents infinity. And the Ouroboros symbol was actually buried in the code in order to, I don't know, spook whoever went digging? Snake has the features you'd expect from a typical rat, like being able to exfiltrate files, run arbitrary commands, and drop further malware. But what makes Snake different, and in the words of the Five Eyes, the most sophisticated cyber espionage tool designed by Russia's Federal Security Service, is that Snake was built from the ground up to achieve a rare level of stealth. Snake's one job is to remain hidden on a victim computer indefinitely, and in order to achieve this, all computers infected with Snake form a peer-to-peer -peer network, acting as a means of stealthily laundering stolen files back to Moscow. You can think of it kind of like Tor. When data was stolen from a certain Snake node, it'd go through a series of hops before ending up in the hands of Turla. To say Snake malware has been wildly successful would be an understatement. Its infrastructure has been found in over 50 countries, and in one example, after Turla hacked systems in an unnamed NATO country, Snake was used to exfiltrate a large volume of United Nations and NATO documents back to Russia. Snake was named after an ancient symbol of infinity for a reason, because it was continuously improved and upgraded, with US intelligence agencies on the back foot for 20 years, leaving them actually kinda impressed and admitting that Snake demonstrates careful software engineering design and implementation, with the implant containing surprisingly few bugs given its complexity. The Russian hackers even left taunts within the code, directed at the intelligence agencies trying to reverse engineer it. But despite all of this, Snake contains some surprising weaknesses which ultimately resulted in its downfall. The most egregious of which was the way it handled its communications. Snake used a 128-bit asymmetric encryption key, which is hilariously inadequate by today's standards, making it possible for the FBI to quite simply crack it. The cause of this ridiculous level of self-own is thought to be a simple mistake of confusing bits for bytes. Had 128 bytes been used, then this video may never have been possible. But that wasn't the only slip up. In order to make reverse engineering more difficult, malware operators typically employ obfuscation techniques, which might include modifying their code, replacing function names and variable names with random looking jargon, so it's difficult for anyone to make sense of what does what. And whilst Snake developers did do this, on one occasion, when pushing out a new version, they forgot, leaving vital clues as to how Snake works buried in its code, making it easier for three-letter agencies to piece together just how Snake operates. Also, in an effort to hamper detection attempts, Snake used a custom implementation of HTTP to communicate with other bots in the Snake network. Part of this custom protocol included an 8-byte metadata structure, used to keep track of which packet was which. However, this structure acted as a kind of signature which inadvertently revealed the presence of Snake communications. So by observing as few as two or three packets of HTTP, the FBI learned to identify computers that were communicating using Turla's Snake. Oh, and speaking of identification, if you're wondering just how Snake was attributed to Russia, this was as easy as observing the times of day of Snake operations, which just so happened to be 7am to 8pm Moscow Standard Time, with US intelligence pinpointing Snake developers as being based in a city southeast of Moscow. By leveraging the mistakes within Snake, the FBI created a tool called Perseus, which was capable of connecting to Snake-infected machines by pretending to be one itself. From there, Perseus would exploit a self-destruct function programmed into it by its Russian authors in order to systematically disable each Snake infection one by one. You could argue that this Snake really did end up eating itself. 
After being granted the search warrants required, the FBI launched their cybernuke in the form of Operation Medusa, which involved deploying Perseus on all infected computers in the US. Notably though, this was done without the permission of the computer's owners, a strategy that has proved controversial in the past, when in 2021 the FBI proactively accessed exchange servers in order to remove malware. At the time, it was described as an unprecedented move by US law enforcement. But since then, this tactic, love it or hate it, it has become the new norm. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments, by the way. What do you think about US intelligence agencies playing IT technician on your computer without your knowledge? Snake might be gone, but those behind it aren't going anywhere. Some of the hackers alleged to be part of Turla are already wanted by the FBI, but Russia is, shall we say, unlikely to hand them over. And so the saga continues, with Snake's replacement perhaps already in development. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, the complete solution for all your PCB fabrication and on-demand 3D printing needs. From standard PCBs to the more advanced varieties, PCBWay provides granular control over every element of your PCB. With super fast turnaround times, you'll be spending more time creating and less time waiting on packages. PCBWay also offers on-demand machining, from CNCing and sheet metal cutting to 3D printing and injection molding. There's an array of materials to choose from, and of course, super fast turnaround times. Sign up now using the link in the description to get a $5 coupon which can be used site-wide. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.